All right, it's time for another countdown to Classic Call, and we've got an emergency call happening at the moment. It's uh, 6 o'clock in the morning in Australia. I just woke up an hour ago to you know get my day started, get ready to go back to work after being in bed with the flu all weekend, and I woke up to some amazing news, and I'm presuming that all of you got hit with this news through your day as well. We got a rather significant update with Classic, and it's the update that we've actually been waiting for. I know we got a little bit of an update uh, about six, seven days ago. I didn't personally categorize that as really like newsworthy. That's why you didn't hear me talk about it on the show. Sort of, it was, I felt like Blizzard was just telling us, Hey, we're working on it. So I didn't really feel like that message was worth rehashing on the show. I know a lot of people lost their minds over it, but this is the one that I've been waiting for. This is the one that I'm happy to start losing our collective shit over. So I've, I've rounded up some emergency listeners to give our thoughts and we've got the always reliable, the always amazing Tala drill. How are you, mate? Hey. And we've also got uh, a bit of a reunion, which is funny because you guys haven't heard the call that they did before. It's coming on the show later, but these guys have spoken together before. Axtel, how's things, mate? Things are good. I just finished the episode with 1927 today, so thanks for having me back. Made my pleasure. And a Countdown to Classic first-timer. It wouldn't be a Countdown to Classic episode unless we had a first-timer on here. Sonosuke, thanks so much for joining in, mate. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. I'm excited about this. Fantastic, man. I'm excited to get uh, stuck into it. So, you know what? Let's not beat around the bush. Let's just fucking do it. Taladrill, I'll start with you. Wow. They obviously showed that they listened. Now, this wasn't a drastic bomb for me. I really had presumed, and I'd heard a couple of things that the classic team was very much so listening to the community. So I wasn't as concerned about that as some others were when they're fire and brimstone. Do they even fucking care about us? Do they even listen to us? Like, I, I knew they were listening to us. So... Hearing this was amazing to know that they actually changed that plan, even though I knew they were taking the feedback on board. What do you think about the move from four phases to six, and what are the ramifications for the community? I think it's pretty good. I would change some slight things. Personally, I would probably do seven phases, but I like it. I, th- I like how they've got a good mix of uh, 40 mans and 20 mans sort of at the same time, that kind of thing. Like, I really like how Zulgurub and Green Dragons is the same phase. That makes a lot of sense. I'm really happy that Green, Green Dragons is not at the same time as AQ because then that really delegitimizes them. So that's really nice to see. Personally, I know it would have been a change of thing. I would have liked to see tier 0.5 moved up a bit because it's sort of pointless by the time it comes out, but that's okay. My biggest beef, honestly, with this at this point, minus whatever they'd say with PvP, is I really don't want to see raids open at launch. I want it to just be a leveling process, but Mm. I know that's probably an unpopular opinion. Well, that would, I mean, forgive my ignorance, but, I mean, Molten Core and Onyxia were available on launch back in the day. Is that right? Yes, they were. But when people were playing back in the day, nobody was rushing to do that content. So that's the difference. It's it's an interesting tweak for sure. I'm sure. I mean, I I I know you appreciate that a lot of people might be against you on that one. But it, you know, as we say, we're more than happy to live in hypothetical land here. Sanasuke, I'll move on to you now to piggyback off of what Taladrill has said. I'll chip in with a little bit of information of mine. Now, I feel foolish as per usual because. I didn't realize the significance of the placement of the green dragons that Taladril has just pointed out, and in terms of the nature resist gear and the placement of Ankaraj as well. I feel like. I mean, people may have been mentioning this, and I feel silly because I'm like, why wasn't I picking up on this in the forums? I feel like that part of it wasn't getting talked about enough, and we're all focusing on Dire Maul. But what did you think of everything in general? As far as this goes, as someone who played through all this content originally, I I love what they're doing with the phases. I think moving Green Dragons away from AQ is better because a lot of gear, even like the best pieces like the Paladin Helmet of Thon or something like that, gets trivialized a lot with AQ drops from the 40 man. The other thing is having ZG split from Blackwing Lair is huge because if you have ZG and Blackwing Lair same day, it trivializes all of Blackwing Lair because of Bloodvine and things like that. And the other aspect is moving Dire Maul away from Molten Core turns Molten Core from being a joke to more of a dad joke. Hmm. So I'm really liking the move of Dire Maul away from <laughs> Molten Core. 
Very good. <laughs> Dad joke. No, I like that. <laughs> I love it. His first call and hitting them out of the park already. All right. Now, Axtel, you got to follow that one up, mate. I hope you got a good joke of your own. <laughs> but <let's>, oh, no. <laughs> let's talk about how um, maybe just focus on that first big point that I think stands out like the proverbial red dog's balls to everyone, which is they've shifted Dire Maul down to phase two away from Molten Core. Tell me about what that means to you personally as someone who's diving in hard on World of Warcraft Classic. Uh, for me, that's going to be, from listening to your show, know that there's a lot of itemization that makes Molten Core the, a lot easier. People kind of count on it. And it makes some items not even worth getting anymore or farming for in Molten Core if you can get them through Dire Maul. Also, doesn't it uh, affect the the economy a little bit? If you don't have Dire Maul available, that's kind of one of the number one dungeons to farm to gather gold quickly, isn't it? So It depends on yeah, how you look at point. it. It depends on how you look at it because um, as a listener raised recently, and I really have to go back and re- re-listen to that episode because I know it's one of the show's more popular episodes. I think, and please someone tell me if I'm wrong here, I believe Party Pooper raised a, a decent argument for the reasons in which why Dire Maul farming does not actually affect the economy. It's sort of its own bubble in a way. Now, I know that's, no, now, I, I know, I, yeah, I, I don't see strange. disagree with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, great. Go for it. Tell me, tell me your thoughts. The problem with Dire Maul specifically for hunter farming. It's not that it's just a bunch of herbs getting injected in the economy. It's pure gold. So in that sense, that specific increases the speed of inflation. So that's why hunter farming Dire Mall is very negative, I would say, to the economy because it is just pure gold added. Dire Mall East, where it's a lot more just herb based, that's not, in my opinion, nearly as bad. Okay. Now, Talitra, well, I'll get you to sort of keep running with the ball a little bit. Outside of that dire mall sort of separation that we've gotten, the next thing we've, we've, that stands out is, I believe Azugos and Kazak were moved as well. They were in phase one before. Is that right? Were they? I don't remember. I can't it remember wouldn't surprise either. me though. Yeah. I mean, they don't have a lot of specific gear, but it's nice to see them just separate. It's, you know, having something new for the 40 mans to do to me is sort of the goal. You know, you can see a, a 40 man for every single stage here. And that's, that's a real bonus. But yeah, they don't have huge gear issues, so they're not, they weren't really, in my opinion, that big of a deal. And honestly, Dire Maul wasn't even that big of a deal to me, too. I'm glad, and we maybe we'll get back into this later, but I'm really glad that they are being careful with the 1.10 Dungeon Blues, separating them out, because they were way more powerful than anything that Dire Maul would bring out. And initially, it didn't sound like they were going to care about those items, and that would have been a really big problem. Hmm. Now, it was initially in phase one. I just double checked. So it was Kazakh and his Azugos were in, um, that stage one of four that they had planned earlier along with Molten Core and Nixia and Diamond. And obviously they've split them up now. Um, Sunasuke, I'll, I'll turn to you. And the next point I wanted to sort of openly wonder about was I wasn't a big Dark Moon Fair guy at all. I know next to nothing about the Dark Moon Fair. I mean, I know about the deck. I know about, you know, some of the buffs it gives and all that jazz and some of the things you can do with it, the things that you can equip. And, you know, I'm sure there's no doubt it's beneficial to you to go through that trawl of having to fucking collect the deck. But tell me if you're, you're not particularly well versed with it maybe one of the other guys is but what is the dark moon fair finally being talked about in the phase release do for you because i know that in the initial um, blizzcon plan it wasn't even mentioned but now we've got mention of it so talk about that for a little bit if you can yeah i'm curious as to why they actually have it put on there as opposed to actually talking about pvp which is a much larger issue mm. but as far as the dark moon fair goes all the trinkets when they first came out everyone was all about those trinkets like i collected them I had all of them, but one of them, I think, which was the, or no, I even got the res trinket. Yeah. So, I mean, I had all the trinkets on several of my sixties. The main thing about the dark moon fair is the beast deck is going to be massive for top end guilds. So you're going to see a lot of Ubers farming. It's going to bring back some of those older dungeons that people are maybe stopping to do. Cause everyone's going to be farming Dyrmo and stuff. They're going to be like, Oh, I guess we better go back to Ubers and farm beast and stuff like that. And then what it's going to do is it's going to also kind of change itemization for BWL and stuff. So like people who might not get the rejuvenating gem or have to wait on some of those items can just get the beast deck as a healer at least and they'll be good for that other classes will try to get the damage trinket 
play around on PvP with that a little bit and then save it for next Ramus. So it'll be pretty interesting, I think. Axtel, um, Sonosuke just mentioned the elephant in the room, which is PvP, not mentioned anywhere. This is what's got a lot of people scratching their heads, and it, it definitely does raise an eyebrow for me too. Where do you think they are considering placing PvP? Um, I mean, surely it's, it's, I mean, I'm looking right around that phase two part, but you yeah. know, we don't know how long it is between phases or whatnot. What do you think about why they didn't place PvP anywhere? Do you think it's much more of a bigger issue than we seem to think it is? I think the gear that comes out of those that are going to push the rewards from the PvP system is going to be could be detrimental, not really detrimental, but could be bad towards when Blackwing Layer comes out. I know that other content creators have already pushed out videos talking about how they haven't addressed PvP yet, and the really the only place that makes sense is probably in the early or mid phase two. If they wait till the end of phase two or the beginning of phase three and later, then it it's going to be bad for the content that comes out in the, the later phases. And they obviously care about what is it the player power progressive content or else they wanted to split the four phases into to six anyways so if i were a betting man i would say phase two the middle or beginning of phase two is when it will come out or even a whole new phase as taladrol mentioned at the beginning of the call like a, a seventh phase that'll fit in between two and three mm. why uh would you think that phase three would be too late i'm curious i had mentioned that some of the um the grand marshal or warlord weapons or gear could be um, compared to the Blackwing layer gear as far as I Well, they got an update at the AQ level, which would put them up to about AQ level of purples. So that's why I would think, that's to me why I would think definitely phase two or phase three, but I think phase three would not be too late. Part of me almost thinks that they're going to release two of the battlegrounds and then save the third one for a different phase. Like that's almost how I'm, that's the vibe I'm getting. Hmm. So I think it's going to be that, and I think that personally, I think two will probably get released in phase two, and one will get released in phase three. Do any mm, that'd be cool? Do any of you find it surprising? And this is open to sort of first in best dressed here. Do any of you find it surprising that there's perhaps a lot more thought going into this than we previously had considered ourselves in terms of the fact that we've been highlighting this summer 2019 release date. Here we are, and in Australia, it's fucking March 12. And summer is not that far away. You know, we talk about winter is coming. Well, fucking summer is coming. And here we are with key decisions still being made or not decided upon. Does that shock any of you? Um, you want me jaded opinion? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I'm pretty surprised they're actually listening to the community this much because if you look at retail, they certainly don't listen to anybody over there. The fact that there are devs that are truly locking in and reading forums, listening to podcasts, maybe. Yeah, that's pretty surprising to me. Allegedly listening to this podcast. Sorry, go for it, mate. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, I think that with the classic team, we're gonna have, we're gonna have that vibe from the devs because when they announced the project they hired for this project, I feel like the people that are the devs on retail, they maybe got hired, I don't know, five years ago working on a project that they maybe were a lot more passionate about. And now the company's, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to work somewhere that you absolutely hate doing the work you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's probably a lot easier for the classic guys that signed up to do this to read the forums and you go take the fight to the table and get what they need to get done. Mm -hmm. Now, Taladrill, I'll, I'll kick back with you to start this one off, and, and then I might turn to you, Sonosuke, to piggyback off of what Taladrill says. But outside of, you know, the meat of the post, which is obviously these six phases that we've been told about, there's actually another considerable meaty little tidbit dropped in there, which they explain a little bit, which is, for all intents and purposes seeming to be a conversation about progressive itemization. Now, I don't think they're being particularly subtle about it. I think they're basically saying, we are... Oh, sorry about my cat. He's going nuts. He's very excited about WoW Classic News. There we go. All right. Progressive itemization coming in terms of pre-1.10 patches and whatnot. Taladrill, what did this mean to you? Did it make your heart fly going, yes, progressive itemization, which we've talked about a lot on the show before? Right. Um, so... There were a bunch of things that were added in 1.10, and I think some things added in 1.11 too. So 
there's definitely a question mark of where some of these things will fit. You know, some of them will possibly be earlier, some of them will be later, but it's nice to see, um, a lot of that stuff was, was considered catch up gear. And so Blizzard was, they weren't, you know, if they were looking back in the day, they probably wouldn't have done this, but they weren't very careful in the sense where it's like, okay, we'll just throw a bunch of these really powerful blues into these random dungeons. And it allowed people who were um, new to the game to be able to pick up some gear and, and be raid viable, you know. So those pieces of gear are crazy strong. They're better than Molten Core gear. They're better than even some Blackwing Lair gear and certainly ZG. So to be able to have some of that gear locked away is really good. And, you know, like Titanic leggings, those things are so strong. That was one thing they mentioned. And those are craftable. And if they were just be available at the beginning of the game as a craftable thing, it would just be way too strong. Mm. Sanosuke, anything you've got to pick up from, on from there? Yeah, definitely. Like the progressive itemization is something that a lot of us who are more of the no changes crowd have been wanting. So that's really good to see. I am blown away that they actually listened and moved Dire Mall away. And so the fact that they actually, it looks like they're doing progressive itemization as well tells me that they're not listening to the retail folks. They're, they're actually listening to the people who played the original game or at least have insight on the original game because of private servers. And that's a really good thing in terms of keeping it. It's not, obviously it's not going to be the same as it was back then, but it's closer now than it was before. Hmm. And that's a really good thing to see. And I really appreciate that they're actually listening and they're doing that. Hmm. And again, it all comes back to the PVP itemization too. How does that progress? And so that's the, they're going to have to make another blue post about just all PVP stuff, but I'm excited so far. Hmm. Axtel, you mentioned to me before we started the call, you might be a bit like me. I'm presuming you know more than me because most people do. But um, you said, suggested that you might be a little bit of a noob when it comes to progressive itemization, not quite the guru in that regard. But that's the same as me. Now, what I'm interested in asking you is, are you basically of the mindset that this stuff doesn't particularly bother you and, you know, I'm sure people who, uh, uh, you know, get, get paid to look at this and the players who invest much more time than we do in the game will work it all out and tell us what we need to hear. Or are you actually going to be pushed to research this a bit more and find out why progressive itemization that is now coming to you in WoW Classic is important to you? Um, yes, in the middle. <laughs> I... uh when I first started WoW, I, I had already started when, or I just started when the 0.5 tier was the thing. So for me, vanilla is leveling up and then trying to get your 0.5 gear set and then getting into raids when in actuality that is not the timeline. Uh, now that I'm older and I, I still have some time to play the game, I do plan on pushing pretty hard, but I am not pushing for a, a realm or world first at all. So as far as the itemization, it doesn't bother me, but I'm definitely more... I'm researching it and getting more familiar with it so that I can better my character and help out uh, whichever guild my friends and I decide to join once the release comes out. But it's something that I honestly didn't even know really existed until I started getting really into your show. So it's definitely something to research. Okay. Taladry, I'll turn back to you and something's just come up in Twitch chat from listener Neil, who we love like a son here on the show, obviously has been on before and who works in the gaming industry. So I definitely put a bit of weight behind his opinion, but I'd love to get your comment on what he said, where he suggests that he thinks that we're getting item gating instead of progressive itemization. Um, and he says that as a game dev PO from his <laughs> point of view, it makes a lot more sense for the rollout and transparency of gaming systems. Do you agree with that or would you somewhat disagree with that? No, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, call it whatever you want to. I mean, I think that he's right in the sense like it's that the gear comes out when, when the patch says it should. What a lot of people talk about when they mean by gear itemization changing is that the literal stats on gear changes. And to me, from like a game enjoyment standpoint, it's just so confusing and weird, <laughs> you know, so to have that be a set thing and to have it never change, but to just simply have it be available or not available, that's definitely the right way to do that. Sonosuke, do you feel the same way about that point? Do you feel it's just like a, a little bit of a decoration of a different concept? They are actually just pushing these items back a little bit behind the gate and dressing it up as something else? To a degree, but I think that a lot of it is in the end is not going to matter as much. I think that it's going to, most of the stuff is going to be gated and I would probably use gated as more of the actual term, but 
the other thing, I don't know, the, the PVP gear, that's what I want to see is we'll know for sure how they're doing uh, itemization as soon as they tell us what they're doing with PVP gear. Hmm. That's like the most important thing. Cause a yeah, lot of that's PVP the gear, yeah, it can also affect the PVE gear. Cause when you look at the, especially with the GM weapons, those matter a lot. So that's the most important thing for me to see now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they, they get a big boost. So if they stick with the original numbers, then you could release it earlier and it would be okay. But if they stick with the one-time numbers, the last numbers, then you need to wait a little bit because they're so powerful. They can overpower uh, other gear by quite a bit because of that. Yeah, you don't want to trivialize all of the raid content because of like a PvP item. Like that's really... Hmm. All right, guys, look, I've got to get to work soon, so I've only got about five or so more minutes left for the call. I do apologize. We could talk about this all day. Unfortunately, real life is getting in the way, but I want to wind up this call by doing the following. I just want to get your sort of free flow thoughts on the news in general. Say whatever the hell you want, and I'll kick us off and just sort of leave it open to the crowd, and whether it goes another five, six, seven minutes, whatever, that's fine. But Obviously, this is amazing news. This is the kind of positive, really substantial news that we've been waiting for. As I said at the top of the show, a lot of what we've heard lately has not been scratching the itch in the way that I've been wanting. And I know that people lose their fucking minds whenever they see blue text. I am not cut from that cloth. I'm a bit of a pessimist that way. I apologize to people. But when I want news, I want it to be news. And so this is that. And I'm really happy. But what I'm wondering now is like, you know, what more we'll get. And I think we're going to get a lot more of this very, very soon. People have been predicting a little bit of a waterfall of classic news very soon. And it, it's not a big stretch to make because, because obviously we're fucking running out of time. Like I keep saying, summer is just around the corner. There's only like people say, oh, three, four, five months away. But I mean, to sound, you know, not to sound too silly, but. We're talking about anywhere between 12 to 20 weeks until Classic. Like, it's not that long. So the news has to come eventually. So I'll open it up to the floor, guys. How did you react to this? What do you think it means for us going forward? I love this post. I knew there was a post coming soon. I knew it was going to be sometime this month. I didn't know exactly when. I was hoping before the 20th, and we got it today, which is great. The most important thing to me, what they did is... Every one of these moves they've made has been to avoid trivializing content. And that's so important to me when it comes to classic because I'm a huge PvE. I focus very much on that. And having all these other content drops at the same time as the main 40 man raids trivializes so much stuff that it would be like such a shell of a game. So having it not be trivialized as much is huge for me. And then also, one thing to note is, since Mardon is going to be out when release happens, something like Thrashblade is going to be a very sought-after item. And it's going to be, you'll probably see a lot of people running that. And I'm, I'm super glad about that, that Thrashblade, Dalrens, things like that are going to be the main weapons of choice. And it's not going to be PvP weapons or other shenanigans. Yeah, I, I agree with all that for sure, too. I like where they're going with this, although this is simply one aspect I'd really like to see what their thoughts are for like world buffs. Like for me, I'd hope that they would remove them, but it would be nice for them to at least talk about what their plans are for them because they really do trivialize content. And then also just to, oh, oh, I forgot my point. (laughs) 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 Continue on. I'll come back. (laughs) All right. It's all good. We'll circle back around. Axtell, anything? Yeah. Uh, for me, since I, I think in this call, I'm, Right there with Josh, where I don't have as much expertise as Taladrill and Sonosuke, but when I see a blue post, I'm one of those people where, like, I will almost pull off the road to look at it if I see it or (laughs) if I get a notification, but then I usually get, like, somewhat disappointed because I've been waiting for so long now for just a date, even a date that says, here's your beta. So with all this blue information is great and I can enjoy the happiness that the community gets from it and are excited that they're listening and going in the direction they want. But at the same time, I'm, I'm like, damn, you know, I, we got that close and there's still no date listed on the post, but they'll release it when they're ready. And, uh, you sound like you'd be like my poor co-host of the Cinephiles, Liam, who hugs random strangers in the street at the sight of good news. <laughs> so we got it. We, we got classic news. All right, buddy, oh, yeah. just it's get off me. Thing. When when I do see a release date, it's going to be quite a good day. There's probably nothing's going to hold me down that day. <laughs> just openly weeping. 
<laughs> Taladrill, how'd you go, man? Did you did you circle back I, around? I, yes, I did think of it. Right. Yeah, so I was going to say, I, I want to see what they're going to do specifically for Molten Core in terms of uh, raid balancing, because I would think that they're going to need to do this in some way. Uh, just because they're releasing the game with 1.12 talents, and that is a huge thing. I would hope that they're going to do something, at least for Molten Core, to make it harder. So I'd be curious to see what they're going to say about that. All right, guys. Well, look, I, I do have to run. We, we've gone almost half an hour. That's about it. Unless anyone has anything really important that they feel we haven't touched on, speak now or forever hold your silence, anyone? I would just say the last thing that I'm looking forward to is seeing exactly how the patches progress. Mm. So what what's the key mm, to timeline it? wise? Yeah. Oh yeah, we yeah, gotta we, get that. I, news. I hope they don't speed through it too much with just a couple months between them because there's plenty of time. To... Yeah, the old three weeks between phases. <laughs> yeah, definitely no. <laughs> yeah, that that's the next thing to know, and, and obviously something that they're still working on. So that 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 adds to sort of my point of just being, it's a bit funny how we don't have that much time left, and not saying they owe us this news but to not be saying hey these phases will come x amount of weeks or months apart like you know whether it's eight weeks apart or four months apart or six months apart i don't know but to not give us that now just it's not odd but it's like i mean you, you could have how do you not know that yet but anyway i mean that's they've still got a lot to work out so fine but anyway, guys, I'll leave it there. Sort of, we've got much more to talk about this later down the track, I'm sure. And I'm sure we'll get more news But by the time we're done talking about this. But thanks so much to all of you for jumping on. I know I put the bat signal up at the last second. You all answered the call. I'm so, you know, happy to have listeners like you who come on at the drop of a hat with such insightful analysis. And, and thanks so much. And I'll speak to you all later. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Good day at work. Good luck. Thanks, Josh. Cheers, guys. Bye.